Yeah, so is John yeah. outside still saying he's not well? Yeah, it's, <laughs> just it's okay. Recording has started. Any qualms? No. Okay. All right. We got two, four, five. Yeah, we need one. Do you mind politely asking him to join the meeting before I go up there? I asked him. Well, I sent him a text. He's late now, so I'll spare him. I think. Oh, I mean, gay. Yeah. Who all is there in the room? Who's here? It's Alejandro. Well, I was going to start to. Yeah, let's take attendance. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, let's begin. Can you hear me, Reed? I'm here. Yes. Please. Um, okay, today is the official weekly TSAC meeting. Uh, let's start with attendance. Mike. Mike Warner, present. Uh, William Coates is here. He's in the restroom. Thank you for waiting on me. And then uh, Danny Malazzo is present. Alejandro Casillas, present. Oh, John Nelson, present. Uh, I'm going to read the I'm here too. Mm -hmm. Oh, code. sorry, Rico. Go ahead. Bye, man. That's all right. That I rebar code. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the mission statement to support the evolving needs of the MSP students by advocating in their best interest to enhance, enhance university experience and opportunities. Uh, after moving the agenda, Mike, do you have? Do you have? Oh, we're good. Yes, I'm here. Uh, sweet. Anybody? Everybody's moving the agenda. Um, I have to change. Okay. I want to remove my the presentation. The reason for that is because I had a new email come through where she can offer someone to come talk to us instead of it being pre-recorded. I think that'd be better um, if we came up with any questions for that pre-recording and someone can answer them. And, so I'll be saving that for next week. Okay. Are you putting the recording in the chat? Uh, yes, I'll put that in the chat okay. for next week. Sweet. So item number four will be removed from the agenda for uh, sponsor's request. Anything else? No? Okay. I say we move uh, in someone motion. I motion to approve this agenda. I second. Everybody who agree? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Sweet. Okay. Mike, um, Board of Trustees. Lovely. So I just got back from two uh, six hour meetings uh, over the past two days, and I have some things to report. So, first thing um, tuition is, uh, ooh, sorry, enrollment is up um, by 5% coming into this next year from last year. 54% um, of these people are people of color, and 78% are women. So um, that's very exciting. Um, you get to hear we have individual students if you like, um, but the biggest increase will be um, Asian students. Uh, of these cohort, 54, almost 55% are Asian, um, with the last category being 1% are white students. So just a good category there, some good news there. Um, and then, oh, um, I think it's 60% of them are first generation as well. Secondly, um, the Board of Trustees has created a new committee. It is the Sustained Racial Justice Committee. Um, it will meet um, meets twice a year, and it will be under the purview of Dr. Michael Benitez. Um, sustained. sustained racial justice. Yeah, that's the committee title, and it's a board level meeting, or a board level committee. Um, we are the first of its kind. No other university has one of these committees on their trustee level. So that's one thing that we're going to lean the way in. Um, this committee meeting will meet in June, and then do this in December. Next thing, C2 Hub and faculty housing. So there's two new developments on campus right across the street um, from the uh, hospitality. Oh Hello, were you hearing me? Now I can, yes. Um, we're talking about the C2 Hub. Yeah. So um, these these position these uh, this facility will be one entity in this new building, um, which is going to start construction about next year. Um, they just got they're on track to get all their funding from the states um, this uh, legislative cycle. 
Um, secondly, in regards to that, AHEC will have its own brand new office center. They have their own floor of this building. And the way it's going to work is this office over here and all the other uh, AHEC offices in this building and on 9th Street will be moved into this shared space. So um, that opens the opportunity and I'll bring this to take out next week. What's going to be happening with this space and the space downstairs and the other spaces? Like, what, what are we going to do with those spaces? Are they going to try to put money generators in there or are they going to try to put student space? Conversation for another day. We can talk about it. All right, what's next? Um, um, the new provost is in currently, uh, Nissan de Ebruña is her name. Um, she gave a speech to the trustees, um, and her main priorities are how students are going to utilize uh, artificial intelligence in the future. Because mm -hmm. um, a new statistic is that 97% of companies and workplaces in the next two years will be utilizing artificial intelligence. So instead of like, what is the word, banning it? How do we inform our students and prepare them for the workforce? Because that's going to be a requirement in the next few years. You must not use um, generative AI. So that was a really good, cool thing she talked about. And then um, getting more students to graduate. Our graduation rate is 13.4%. Her goal is to get that up, up, and quickly. How much? 13.4%. So from the four-year graduation rate, so you start off as a freshman, yes. that cohort, only 13% are set to graduate in four or five years. And then it's diff it differs out to five to six accordingly. Next, um, what is this for? This is the student success, success launch and equity gaps they're, they're working on, so kids and the provost are working on. They had their meeting, they had their kind of um, talks, and they have some recommended action steps. These are not confirmed yet, but they're looking to be confirmed next year. Um, they're looking to hire a black student success coordinator for CME and Vietnam, who work in that function, um, and then implementing a black cultural center as well. Um, and then expand resources to black Greek organizations on campus, as well as other student organizations on campus. So that's what they're gonna invest in, but it's, that's the action step to do so. And then um, establish culture responsive training for faculty advisors, academic advisors, as well as success coaches as well. Lastly, well, almost lastly, FAFSA. So FAFSA is completely different. Um, it went from a one hour to two hour process. Now you can probably get it done in about 10 to 15 minutes. And now we're working on educating uh, the students on how to use it. Um, Pell Grant access in the new bill that the uh, United States has adopted is now expanded. So those who are not eligible for Pell Grants can now probably get Pell Grants. So I'd say look at that again. And then uh, to your questions, easier to do. First page done. Um, lastly, you're almost done. Philanthropy. Um, so the institution received a $10 million grant or philanthropic donation for um, the creation of a health institute to work on public policy and stuff like that and kind of all things relating to that major. Um, there's a groundbreaking or like a celebration next week, the 13th for that. Um, AI workshops, if you're interested, there are AI workshops that the school is going to host in April. Um, open education resources this is for Will, this is what he ran on last year. Mm -hmm. um, they are switching. Uh, they so sixteen thousand two hundred thirty students this year have been in open education resources. Mm -hmm. That is probably about eighty percent more than eighty percent of our students currently, and um, they're looking to move further with that. Um, the governor of Colorado it, uh, issued a challenge by the end, I think, twenty five, to have all institutions move towards zero textbooks, mm -hmm. and this also means like things like Sandage. So we're going to look on like how to get your textbook and homework, but not having to have a paywall for it. So they are pretty good in that goal. They've saved students. This initiative and this program has saved students $37 million. And that's it. Jeez, that's that all the so, any questions. There's a lot. A lot. Any questions? Um, um, so for last meeting, it was mostly about Sydney's Hub's uh, grand opening for that state Wednesday. I have been in contact with the speaker that are supposed to speak that that day, which is my dad, Gabriel. Um, I believe, uh, Marie, right? You said you might be able to table that day for the for Peace Act. I'm going to be doing three different tables. So I'll be there from um, two to five for an hour for each. 
Um, I'm also wondering if there's anyone else that could be there for the tabling from 3.30 to hopefully not 6.30, but that's your time. Okay. Right? You'll be there, ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, thank you, Daddy. Because I myself will be in the front desk checking people in for this event. So. What day is this? Wednesday, March 13th. 13th. Say that again. What room? What room? Downstairs. Oh, okay. where Stacey sounds at. Gotcha. Yep. And then, yeah, um, that's mostly it. I talked to CB Denver about that, and they're just more concerned about like who's going to get the speeches and whatnot, which I already covered. Right, Mike? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I heard the speech. <laughs> yeah. We did? We did. Oh, have you seen the final copy yet? No. Oh. I I'll, I'll, send you I'll send you a copy. Please run and find me. Yes. <laughs> it's getting cleared by my attorney. Okay. Yeah. Right okay. But yeah, uh, as far as uh, SACAB, that is the latest news. Uh, thank you for bringing up that. That point with the uh, there's some interest in like what when a type moves, moves out of here, that's something definitely that we need to ask, you know, ask about. So uh, definitely get with me. Try to move something out and you know, ask the right questions. Hey Gabe. Dave's not here. Oh, I just saw his name. No, you. There he is. There he is. Oh, hey. I knew it. I, knew it. <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> We're right in the middle of taking out all the so, no comment, no comment from me. No <laughs> comment. <laughs> uh, Moving on. Accountability committee read. I have a resolution to present. I believe it'll be a new business. I'll take this moment to also talk about the fact that I'm Dr. Barone and Alejandro and I met uh, this past week to talk about recommendations to put forward for um, AHEC and student affairs possibly, but going to feed into that recommendation for the event, hopefully around the time of orientation and welcome week, and then bring it to all of you by next Friday for next Friday's meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Budget. Uh, no update from budget. No update. Uh, I got a question. For budget? Yeah, but I'm pretty sure of the answer. I just want to ask you directly. Um, for the elections, the money that's going towards that, that's elections has its own budget, right? Its own money. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. PR committee. Yes. So the police really are your friends. The Auraria Police Department was instrumental when I was detained on February the 26th, 2024, at about 10.44 a.m. I was in the science building, and there was a situation, and it's documented. I don't have to get into all the details, but Eric Martinez was the officer that helped escort me from that location to the Tivoli building where I was able to vote. Now the details get a little bit blah, blah, blah. And so I'm just putting it out there that the police have been instrumental in helping. I was in the back of the car when they uh, when they had me sit in the car. It's too cramped. It's, it's like, I was literally like this because my legs was hurting. And so I spoke to Eric and I said, Eric, you all got to do something or do something about the car situation of being tight. And he said, well, we, we we don't decide that. And I said, at the next student government meeting, just because someone is detained doesn't mean they have to be like this. Because when I was in that car, I, and my mind started going, I was like, well, yeah, people know me on campus. Uh, that's fine. But for that moment, my mind was like, I see what Martin Luther King went through and Harriet Tubman and all that. And the incidents started with the Karen type situation. And I thought it was coming from a person that was white. However, it was a person of my own color who misinterpreted me. And so I 
have to be mindful that this young lady didn't know any better because if she knew better, she would do better. And everybody involved was doing the best they could, including myself. And I wasn't going to bring this up when I said in the report, because I was like, I got class, I got a lot of stuff going on. But the ancestors were talking to me and they was like, say something, because this could have happened to someone else. However, I want to make sure I compliment. The police were instrumental in helping, because you remember how we had re-put it together. We had that training. God fixed it to where I was treated with the utmost respect. So that's what I wanted to say about that. And the yeah, thank you. I have an update for the Public Relations Committee. Um, it's actually a question for elections manager as well. So um, after the finalizing of our um, elections code, can you give me a timeline on when you'd like things to be posted and stuff like that? Because I'm taking on that from Matt. Okay. Yeah. So, um, um, I was going to probably email you today or Monday. Mm -hmm. um, I've got all my event date and time set so I can, I can throw together some uh, visuals also. Cool. Yeah. Just let me know what you need um, for that. And, I'll I've got some ideas and, and Gabe and I have to talk offline because I kind of got excited. I have all these ideas and I was I'll have to speak with you offline. But thank you. Unless you got something to say, Gabe. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so with sustainability, um, I'm also the chair for sustainability for uh, FACAP. And Earth Week is coming up um, and it will be in April. And, and uh, Cassidy from ASC, ASC wow, I remember. So <laughs> many so, um, She is, is asking if the government wants to table at community events. Um, to really bring in that collaboration and especially with that connection to AHEC of AFDP to really bring in more of that quad institutional um, teamwork. Um, I, I actually did a lot of like, this last year as the chair for it as well. Um, I'd like to see us actually do some volunteering. I know they do, they give you nice garters and you go on the lake over there and pick up the uh, trash from the city. There's like a lot of opportunities they do doing that as well. I'd love to see us do it. I know. I know that's later. Cool. But yeah, like I remember distinctly doing it before student government last year. So I, I went to that and I came to with an, uh, an hour later. So I think we should all do that. I'd love to see all that because I believe it was just me and good option. There. Yeah. I'm gonna go there. So we are planning on something mm -hmm. uh, for that. Uh for volunteering. So it is coming. It's in the it's in the back, I promise. It's coming to my resolution. No. The the motion. My resolution. That's a resolution. Okay. Well, the volunteering part is coming. So this is separate, though. This is separate. But you want you want another volunteering day? Yeah. What's, what's that, wrong with more volunteering? That no, that's not. That's a different week. March and April. No, but you want another. You want a different volunteer yes. day on the week of Earth on the on yeah. week of Earth. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. And I can make that resolution if we want, but like I, I want to make it like an actual student member event. So I got it. Uh, anything else? Okay, uh, open floor. I have one. So I didn't put my uh, res president's cabinet thing because Mike just said it, most of the things that happened at president's cabinet, uh, a lot of the things that were updated on, including the AI. Um, I'm excited for the people that are in charge of the AI yes. yeah. program. Um, I'm excited that they're in charge of it. I'm excited that it's part of the philosophy department could be careless from a very like ethical standpoint. Um, but we did get a response about our the solution that we brought up on the war comment. Hmm. And um a statement is coming up, but it's gonna be regarding freedom of speech. So it's not gonna be exactly what we want. Uh we're gonna wait and see how that goes. And see what the university has to say, and then we will figure it out how to go from there. Yeah, I have an update as well. I'm not done with it. I'm not done. With it. No, you're good. Um, and then for this one is coming up on the 
Do we have? Oh, it's in not not an old business, but we had the shared governance yeah. thing last week. We can move it for next week. Um, but if, if you guys saw it in the chat, please just think about it about the shared governance um, policy. Just look at it because it is coming under review, and that community is coming to speak to us here soon. No, they haven't told us yet. They're making the rounds around the university. They haven't got. They haven't. Seen. Yeah. Do you want me to reach out to them? Do you want me to bail them? Just, I just want to make sure that there's time if everything else is going on staying on the agenda. It okay. doesn't have to be short term. I'll, I'll email. I know. I'll email Dr. Lechuga. Oh, this week. Dr. Lechuga. I okay. think Dr. Lechuga's part of it. Okay, great. Yeah. Yes, Mike. I have a question. If you're done. Tell me. <clears throat> Well, about this? Are you doing your update? I'm done. Yeah. John, did you have an update? Right, yes. So I just found out today with CU Denver, um, there is a recreation meditation space that's being uh, that's been put together at the church Saint at what is it? Saint. I think I'm no, it starts with a C. That's yes. yes, that area where. It's, it started off with the Muslim population, but it's a place where you can pray and meditate and all that. And it's done for the uh, the, uh, the Auraria campus, including us, MSU, CU, Denver, CC. So I wanted to say that because I was just speaking to some people in CU, Denver about that. So that's real cute. I wanted to bring that up. Thank you. Um, it's on the agenda, but did we finish doing the entire constitution last week? Yes. Yeah. You did? Yeah. I was remote, so I didn't, I didn't catch that. I, um, yeah, I just wanted to announce and congratulate Gabe because he was one of the winners that won the Minds of the Greater Scholarship. Congratulations. I know, Gabe is a big winner. He's going Here we go. strong. He's finishing strong. Yeah, <laughs> Yes, congratulations. Yeah, we're, we're, we're set. Cool. It's my turn again. Faculty and Senate. <laughs> so they are revising the minimum grade for a passing rate for graduate students who was the first week. They still have this past week. So more updates and nothing up. Um they voted to change the policy so that graduate students that are doing a dual program, so that are doing the graduate program and a bachelor program, that they don't have to wait until the graduate program um, opens for registration. Now the graduate students also get to register at the same time as undergraduate schools. It's really cool for them because they have to wait some time because they're better enrolled as a graduate program, even though they're still taking undergraduate classes and they have to wait and use those events. But Working on that. Mm -hmm. um, a big conversation on accepting students from non accredited institutions. Uh, so, on open accessibility for education, that one's gonna come. I'm, I'm gonna come to you for that. Uh, there is a discuss like right now, they're just discussing like what, what the boundaries are with that because there has been a lot of like nursing students that have been scammed. From mm -hmm. non accredited institutions, and then they come into the institution and they don't they don't have like the base plan to succeed in their nursing program, but they're already paying tuition and it's just so scared. Yeah. So it's it's getting work on it. Um and also the in order to get an incomplete that is going to change too, it's going to be that you have to do at least 60% of the required work before mentor. Um, that includes attendance and includes like workload. So it's not just going to be open anymore. It's there's gonna there's gonna be that. When has those in effect? Is it we don't know yet. They're they're, they're in the we are in the I lost it. The I'm sorry. <laughs> um, hold on, I'm I'm about to where are we? Take your time. Uh, no, still reading. We haven't voted on it yet. Okay. Yeah, Mike. I have a comment related to that because um, this will come up in the fact. 
faculty, faculty stuff. Um, AI, so whether or not like you're allowed to use AI in your classes, the current policy, whether teachers are, which, whether the deans are enforcing it or not, is that it needs to be clearly stated in your syllabus. So like, just a reminder, if you're using AI, make sure you check if it's allowed in your syllabus, but a change that to more healthily incorporate AI into the curriculum will be coming towards the faculty senate eventually um, for inputs. But just putting that out there, we'll do it now to check your syllabus. At least that part. Yeah. And just let me give a direct comment to that. Um, if you're if something that that I can name Dr. Dr. Samuel J. Dr. Samuel J. Thank you. He's the one, he's the one tasking. Yes, he's the one. Um, Church. Also, Same. like if your professors are not allowing you to use AI, like they probably shouldn't use AI. That's something he brought up. Yeah. Like in the spirit of friendship. So check on that with your professors as well. So I would say this use technology as a tool, don't let it turn you into a fool. We all, technology is the slave, not the master. And so I just want to make sure that that's brought out. And, and I talk to students and I say this to them too, even myself, as good as I am with technology, I still like to use my brain. So that's just something I want to keep us in conversation about, because I'm not against technology at all. It's the intention. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Council of Chairs and Directors, I have class. So what do you think? I'll get out this for you, this from that panel team. Yes. I have a question in regards to that. Is it worth us continuing to like put that on this agenda? Is it? Yes, because it is a council. I think that is what we want. And maybe maybe we should discuss this. But I do think that because it is a a council of chairs mm -hmm. and the fact that we're there with the chair department so like it, it allows us for a space where we can advocate for ourselves mm -hmm. and that they the admin knows that we are in the same level of like stakeholding that we are in that same level yeah like i i don't think i don't think we should get out of that okay cool. um, just just ask me that's that's the one where i called brave for being Oh, but drop notes, right? Exactly. So I think like it is it is a space for us to like have people as well for ourselves and like sustain that like our level of state holding is just one of the things. Google. Yeah. I don't know. Do we have to grab our heart? <laughs> So. Um so a couple things. Well, let me start out with student orgs. Um, I just want you all to know that I've been working a lot with the ACPE and AHEC and our other campus partners in ACPC and we're CCD, and we've been having a lot of conversations around um people demonstrations and um, as we're going into this 2024 election year, just to think that we're going to be proactive about preparing for. I want you all to know this is like top of momentum and has been for a while now, but now even more than ever. And just know we are having a lot of conversations um, with institutions and with AEC and APPD. I will be um, working on sending out a communication with Tony Ajo, the new Associate Director for Student Orgs and Leadership, um, and our student orgs team to remind all of our student organizations of the policies regarding people demonstration, um, protesting, postering, posting around campus, chalking, all of those things related to um, making sure that our campus is a safe place and hopefully like that we want to maintain that and reminding our student organizations of the, you know what they need to abide by in order to be able to peacefully demonstrate um because there have been some violations of that we have a lot of off-campus organizations coming on campus who are sometimes using the student organizations to um put forth their ideology or their agendas and so we're very aware of that and just recognize that that's probably going to continue to grow as we get into the election season and i know some of you have raised concerns that things have brought to you about different things going on and so i just want to remind you all that some things yes are protected by freedom of speech and we still have an obligation to maintain the community 
um, that is enriching for our campus and that there are parameters to that as well. So just know that is something I'm um, and reminders about that will be going out in the next few days to student organization officers and advisors specifically, because that's who we want to make sure is getting the information. Let, let me just announce that it is 1 p.m. Like one or two, oh. yeah, and it's time for public comments. We will remain with our uh, our announcements and updates unless someone shows up for public comments. But otherwise, thank there's, you, Dr. There's Rodney. one person I'm going to ask. Excuse me. Is anyone? Okay. 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 All right. No, they didn't. They're gone? Okay. Yeah. Senior leaders. Um, so Dr. Simpson, what will be next time for the next meeting? Um, next week from 2 to 2 30 is on the agenda. So I just wanted to remind you all of that and to ask if you all have any specific topics that you would like to cover. Um, I know some of you have mentioned to me the interface survey results is one thing that would have interest to you around the um, how student employees and staff and faculty are, you know, experiencing tomorrow issues and some of those things, trust those things. So if that's a topic, I can ask him, but I, I wanted to just throw that out there. Please send me the things that you're interested in hearing about um, so that you can be there. Um, the other thing I have been tasked with is to meet with Ed Brown to get on Dr. Davidson's calendar more proactively this year. Um, for the new administration. And then also we are trying to find a dinner um, with all of you. This is the last one if you all remember who were here. Mike, um, we'll be doing something um, and we'll be getting a calendar in my office soon, but I'll be asking when you're all available to do like a celebratory dinner um, with Janine, Dr. Davidson, and Deb <laughs> um, in the coming months. So that's something else I wanted to just let you all know about. The other thing I wanted to let you all know about the Total Rewards Committee, HR Total Rewards Committee, I'm on that committee. It's a um, policy review committee um, around the various benefits that we get that, but also things like the holiday calendar, with uh, compensation, those types of things, benefits. And um, I, Asked if there is anyone who has the capacity or the time to join that committee meeting because one of the main topics that we're talking about is the holiday calendar. And the big topic of conversation is regarding um, holidays and Indigenous Peoples Day was a big one. That was a resolution that you all passed, well, not you all, TSAC passed last year. Mm -hmm. um, and the, Naomi was the author of that. And so that, um, has prompted a lot of uh, review of the holiday calendar and those things. And so I know them is no longer here. However, they really want input from feedback and that's why they're pursuing this and because they should be. Um, but I just read responded to my request and said she could probably attend some of the meetings, but I'm going to ask you all for input and feedback on whatever documents um, are shared with me. I've already seen the documents, but just around the holiday calendars and how those things are um, celebrated. So, because it, it has to do with campus closure and contact hours and all of those things that I know Jenny has talked about related to the policy committee too. So, I just want you all to know that that is coming. Um, the other thing I just want to remind you all of is inauguration um, this year for the new um, council will be May 3rd. And um, I want to make sure I will put it all in the calendar or among the yeah. If we can start getting those calendar invites and we all know when the, those dates are, we would love to have you there. Traditionally, the former council is always there um, to help with the inauguration. And um, it's a formal kind of ish <laughs> event, but um, it's a really great way to make that transition. And so that's something. Yeah, I'll just comment. I actually also wrote said I invited everyone in that for trustees as well. And once we get like the official thing planned, they'll receive an invitation, especially Dr. Davidson, who has attended two years, but sounds, <laughs> sounds great. 
Um, so working on that. Um, the other thing, service. So um, Roadrunners give back. I put it on everyone's calendar. I told you I was going to do that last week. I did. Um, I'm working on I'm meeting with Tony after this meeting um, to get the details. We're signing up on that, and I know there's a resolution about that as well. But in terms of the volunteerism piece, um, my I guess ask if you all are open to it, and I think that's what's in the resolution. I haven't read it, but um, I would like to see if we could have that with a day of service if they have a good traditional meeting on that day, um, and it would be the week after spring break. And so as a community builder in the middle of those service opportunity, um, we have a grant from all state and we really need to bolster um, engagement with students. Um, the grant is to serve underserved populations in the Denver metro area. They really want students in that. Um, and we have funding for food and transportation and shirts. I mean, we really want to make it a a big deal we're doing it with the honors program undergraduate studies and if we do you know we're really trying to get students from all areas of the campus so it's not just student government i want you all to know that this is much broader than that and will be also involved so just know that that's something and i'm even asking my staff to please help us what date is it dr Brown? it's on your calendar it's march oh. 29th march 29th mm -hmm. oh yep i already put the poll on it Demonstrate through this all state grant to this engagement in a really positive way that we have a strong likelihood of getting this grant again moving forward. And I think it can really help us um, in a lot of ways. We're also um, offering prizes um, to the student organization with um, the student org with um, the most representation at the um, citizen engagement days. $500 for their student org to be able to buy swag, that's logo swag. I'm also wanting to do the same thing for a department or a program. So any department or program that has most students there, we're going to offer some kind of, I don't know, $500 or something. Go ahead. So my representation numbers, it's not different people. Yes, yeah, like numbers. Of people. numbers of people, like for example, the Veterans Center. Veterans Center got 30 people there. And that was the most, you know, then the Veterans Center could get whatever. Or, I don't know. We got to figure out what that is. Um, so working on that. But just so you all know, really trying to encourage that. We need more details to come. And I think that's it. I will be out the last week of um, March because it's my kids' spring break and we're traveling. So I'm not going to. I'm always here, I'm not here. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Dave, you have something? Yeah. I, I, I think that's correct. Number one, for, for the day of service, yeah. can people double oh, it? I see your institution numbers. So, like, 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 like from Urban Leadership Program and Student Government, is that like, does that count as institution for both? I think so. Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, yeah, 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 and she, yeah. So, my sense is awesome. Yeah, and my second question for May 3rd is there like a time, like, yet specified for that celebration I mean, or a time frame? Yeah, we typically do it over when is May 3rd? What day of the week is May 3rd? It's <laughs> Friday. I'm going to try to be for graduation, and that's the honor. It is Friday. Thanks. Yeah, uh, typically we've done it around the lunch hour or around the same time as the normal meeting would be, so that can coincide with that. That's what we're doing. So, like, we'll do the lunch and then it will go into the same as normal. Um, that's it. Marie. Hello. Um, I would love to take this to the graduate council to get the graduate departments to participating in this. And um, I want to know, besides, you know, the 29th, 
like if you have like an outline of what you're expecting people to do and when and you know stuff like that i can take that and we can shoot it out to everybody yes I'm on with Dr. yes we, i have a response to that i'm working with tony she sent something out but i really want it to be more comprehensive what you just said um to really outline um the various opportunities and how that's all going to work so that it's more universal because the one she sent was very direct towards one population and I wanted to be than that. So I'm going to work with her on that to get that information um, available to everyone to be able to promote it. And then just so you know, there the sites right now that we're looking at are Habitat for Humanity, the Ronald McDonald House, the Auraria Sustainability um, Committee for folks who can't leave campus or you know they do a few hours, you know, something closer. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, uh, Denny had a good suggestion this morning, Casa de Paz, that is supporting immigrant um, or migrant families who are coming here. So we have um, a lot of sites, but it depends on how much sign up because there are spots for those sites. And then the other one that we had was about, um, I think it was Food Bank of the Rockies. Was what? A Food Bank of the Rockies. Of the Rockies. Yeah. Yeah, for food insecurity. Yep. I wondered if, um, so you said you're thinking about maybe a $500 for the department and whatever. So maybe, you know, people would be inspired because some departments have like no money, trust me, to be able to use it as they want and have an end of year celebration, celebrate the graduates kind of thing. They can use it for whatever. That would be like a small dollar grant, something for however they want to use it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. I'm excited for you. And anything That's else great idea. to support? with all of your stuff, you know, just reach out, reach out. Okay, please. I appreciate you all. We're going to be buying for that, for that office. The $500? Yeah, we're pretty yeah. good for it. Oh my um, goodness. So I actually had a question. So like, let's just, say, what was that, Reed? I said, You're okay, hey, you just hang on. You're going to get a little competition there. Oh, I like it, Ray. Yeah. I get on. I see that. The $500 prize for Luca being involved. <laughs> I know. But um, so let's say, like, for the student orgs that are here on campus, if they have chapters from different schools, would that still count in there? Or does it have to be oh, members here on campus? No. Yeah. I don't think on the chapters from other schools because this has to do with MS Denver but we really want this to be MS Denver focused. Mike, yeah. it's yeah. actually my department doing this. Yeah. I think your alumni can. Uh, you know, so oh, I think, yeah, I think like if your alumni are part of the or something, right. they choose to do that. I believe, I believe uh, I told you. So their chapters are related to, but um, so, <laughs> well, I'm not sure. A question's a question. Okay. Right? All right, sorry. Dr. Okay. Dr. Ron, one of the requirements should be everyone wears MSU Denver gear. So all the photos will be amazing. <laughs> you know, you can wear your own department but, stuff too, but MSU Denver, we're all showing school spirit, right? We bought really cute shirts that say Roadrunners Give Back with a very cute design for everyone to wear. <laughs> Yay. Uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay, you're good. Stuck around. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Election updates. All right. Um, I've got all my events planned, uh, date and time set for the rest of the season. Um, I'll just say what they are really quick. I've got I've got two tables next week. Shout out to Kenny and Marie tabling with me. Uh, excited to see them there. Um, we got a virtual info session on Friday for prospective candidates. Uh, if you hear for attending that with me, mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna run like a last chance table the Monday we get after from right. spring break. Yeah. Just like, hey, you got till Wednesday if you can get the signatures, <laughs> go ahead and apply. Um, if people can come by that one if they want, but no biggie. That's just like I said, a last chance. Um, I'm attending uh, the voter engagement. Uh, I don't remember exactly what they're called. They're running an event called Vote Run Win. Um, and I'm going to have a table there on March 27th. Um, try to get people interested, uh, just prepared for uh, voting and looking out for candidate events. Um, I am running our town hall 
on April 3rd. I believe that is a Wednesday. Yep. Um, so anyone who's planning on running again, I uh, very much encourage you to come. Um, and if you're not running again, you can still attend, uh, see, you know, see what's up, ask questions. Uh, we're getting uh, Los Molinos catering, so good food if you stop by. Great, thank you. Uh, Saint Oh. So uh, more people, more better, because it'll look nice. <laughs> um, I'm going to do a social with candidates uh, in the week of April 8th. I believe I have that booked. What does that mean, social with candidates? So anyone running again, uh, I got the garage booked. I'll have some food again, and then we'll just have like a place for candidates to interact with anybody who stops by and wants to ask questions, get some oh. candidates. So I'll be, um, I'll send out like a full schedule with all the details next week for anyone who's running again. Can I um, ask you when you're creating that, well, you have the calendar, but can you create Outlook calendar invites sure. to student election, um, or I don't know, what is that, email thing, mm -hmm. where you can invite us, well, specifically me and whoever, like maybe just the council, so that they can show up or have their calendar. Sure. Um, because it's not an Outlook calendar. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> There's a speech that, that is fair. <laughs> um, so yep, yeah, that's uh, and then I'll be doing some get out the boat stuff. I'll probably just run the golf cart and make a make some noise on campus trying to get people to vote uh, during the week of April. Also, um, but yeah, so that's all of our events. Just comment. Oh, sorry. Yes. All right, I have a lot to say today. Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to suggest maybe you um, we get rowdy to mm. go do the golf carting with you. That's really um, good. And maybe. We have giveaways or something. I don't know. I, I normally am not here, but come to check in with me. Like, I don't know what we give away, but something get people to come to the golf cart and just be rowdy with us. We have an in house rowdy um, that we can be a team. Perfect. Yeah. Will we be able to ride in the golf cart? Huh? Will we be able to ride in the golf cart? Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, that'd I mean, be cute. Yeah, that'd be okay. fun. Anyone who wants to, yeah. to show up, uh, it's all about just like getting people on campus aware that Absolutely. we're running, so, yeah. uh, running an election. Sorry. Um, I also have the final updates to the elections code. It's just the descriptions of uh, candidate roles. Um, we can get into this uh, later if we want to, but they're all copied from last year, except for the student council requirements have been updated to reflect last year's uh, vote, or sorry, last week's votes. Um, and then the state cap and trustee requirements are from the state. So those are the same as well. Um, and then I added a definition of manager because it's referenced a lot. Uh, it is refers to the appointed position of manager of election services who works under the MSU Center for Multiple. Do me favor, slow down. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Uh, refers to the appointed position of manager of election services who works under the MSU Center for Multicultural Engagement. Um, just something basic for people to refer to in the definition section. So um, I sent these to Armando to add to the code, or yeah, to the code. Um, I tried adding it, but I can't add it to the So I don't know, like I'm not supposed to, but um, he said I can send it to Okay. I can, I don't know if you still have editing to do, but it might be. We'll have okay. to figure it out. I, I talked to him about it, so he okay. said he's going to add them, but just okay. want everyone to be aware oh. that this works pending uh, adding it to the file. So I have a, I'm codifying the code today into the Constitution. Please. So do you want, we, we have to work on getting that into this resolution. How, how are we going to do this? I, can I spit? I've got the exact text that we'll be okay. adding I don't know. the section and article. Um, so we know like where it will be located and how it will be worded. You do it there. Yeah, um, I could send, I put the file into the chat. Yeah, can I do as well? Um, mm -hmm. If he has the changes, we can just, I think you can just vote on the changes and add it to the Yeah, yeah so that might be the easiest thing. So, but I can do it from another one. Wait, John, were you asking if you could write on the cart? Is that what you were asking? Mm -hmm. Well, are you rerunning? Yes. Then no. So that okay. would be a conflict of interest. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. Have you thought about what up, uh, brought up to you? Uh, yeah, I, I was going to wait until we got to that. Um, okay. Yeah.
Thank so, you, Dean, for uh, 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 saying that to me. Yeah. And, uh, I appreciate that. So, so what you have, you, Mike, you have the election slot right here in here right now? That's the entire election slot minus like the, the paper that's in the room. But yes, yeah, so. So we need that in here. Uh, move on, let's move on to the next thing and I okay. can fix the phone for this. Okay, sweet. Are you good, Sam? Yes. Sweet. All business. I will, we will skip the shared governance thing. Please take a look at it. Um, that's important because, especially with the shared governance committee coming up, that we got to vote on. Just think about it because that's going to definitely affect the, like, the next sample, the next administration. I need that back. My bad. You can that to me. Thank you. Okay, moving to new business. Okay, you're up. Okay, so, um, the, yes, so lovely. Um, this is a long time coming. Our elections code is not in our constitution. You should probably put it in our constitution so the things in there are binding. Now, um, what I've done is taken election code that was passed last summer, last year, and um, I've made some slight changes to it, which if you all disagree with, you can bring it up for a uh, friendly amendment so we can see how the votes go for that. But um, it's basically the exact same thing. Um, Matt, help me with this. If you want to read the first two articles, but um, let's fix it real quick. So, can you scroll down, please? I'm offer, if, uh, go back up, back up. Yeah. This part here. Why is it two section? Matt, why is it two section? Um, it's, it's fine. Um, but I want to add in here, and this is a funny amendment to the floor, which means the council votes on the dead. Yeah. Okay. Section, section four, um, we will add in the elections managers changes um, via voice votes of each change. And I motion that to the floor. So that will add in his changes that he has currently. We, but we just have to vote each one of them. Okay. So. I need a second. Sorry, I second. My bad. Sorry. I sorry. I, I said okay. I'm sorry. So that's just stating his. Yes. So we 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 will discuss and vote them in. Yes. Yes. We like this in Okay. No, say. Yes. Okay. I think that it should be put somewhere that if there was an oversight from uh, there was oversight from. Yeah. Well, that's what he's saying. All right, I wish I find an elections manager. It's it's a big document, so I don't this think that's the elections vote proposed by election manager. Is that not of each change? Of each change. Oh yeah, put in there of each change. Thing. I think Will is referring to the entire amendment. Oh, like in like oh that he's overlooked it. Yeah, he's seen it. He's yeah, that he has. Oh, he's enjoyed. Yeah, that's yeah. So I could. The reason why is because I've had students come to me voice complaints about um, a conflict of interest when counselors go in and change the election codes. And this poses a, a, a question of um, when um, rerunning uh, counselors, right, will come back to TSAC and if they had a hand in changing the election code, right. that would be. In my eyes, a conflict right. of interest. So Matt's actual like stamp would be Sam. 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 I know Sam. what you meant. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. His approval would be there to mitigate those concerns from students. Did you read them? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Would you be willing to endorse it? Yeah. I I'm I willing to endorse it. I just didn't know like the decorum for having a non-council member. In the endorsement section. Yeah, okay. Yes, Ray. Thank you. I was trying to find the hand. Listen, we could all try to run again. And I think that's a moot point about the current counselors working on the election code. I mean, the fact is, that's the way it is because we are active counselors, you know, codifying this code for future counselors, whether we are running or not. I think. If we all chose to run again, what would we do? I think that that doesn't hold water. I think we, we, I mean, it can be changed by future counselors, but the fact is we are all the council and the election is about the council. So we have a right to make changes to this 
with our advisor present, you know, with our elections manager present, you know, they can be people from the student body who disagree and, and petition to have it changed. But I don't know what else to say, except the fact that because we work on our own constitution and other um, official documents and, and that, that are about our ability to um, conduct business, this is one of those things. That's my opinion. Yeah. And I think I, let me know, correct me if I'm like, I, I don't think he's getting rid of that. I, I do think that having Sam endorse it will bring a little bit more legitimacy to, to it. And Sam is willing to, so I, I don't see that there's any harm. Yes, Mike. So we need a vote on the friendly amendment. On the friendly amendment? That, that well, we should endorse it. I just wanted him to. Cool. Endorse. So yeah. There's no more discussion. We need to vote move on with the actual work. Okay. Are you motion that we vote on the friendly amendment? Second. Well, Kenny has something to say. Yes, Kenny. Is this wording okay? I think they put a D on there, but yeah. That's, yeah, that's good. Say be conducted by verbal vote instead of be done via. Say be conducted by verbal vote. Sorry, the editor in me. <laughs> oh, thank you. Very appreciate it. Perfect. Okay. Okay. We're we're voting to add this friendly amendment. Everybody who agrees, say aye. 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 Any Abstain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So we have one of one of us. Lovely. Now continue on, with the gentlemen. Yeah. Go please. Go ahead. So we now now we have to vote on each of your individual changes. We also technically you don't have because I you all have been presented this document with ample time and notice. I will at least point your attention to a change I've made. So in the in the app making this resolution this document, I have changed. Uh, do you mind going to? I wish these were numbered. Um, like part of a referendum. It's highlighted in there. It's like highlighted uh, yellow. I took the highlight. There we go. So this is a change to the referendums and referendums and recall section. I have stricken the 80% of last year's turnout and I've changed it to 10% of the student body. As a change I've made in me making this resolution, I've consulted with our advisors about it as well. So now we don't have to debate this because it's in my resolutions in my amendment. I don't, unless someone wants to change it, then we can offer for the amendment to change it. That's just me pointing it out to you. So, for transparency sake. So, if no one has anything, we can move on from that. Yeah, I think, I just don't see how it's fair to require 10% of the student body to remove somebody when it's not required 10% of the student body to elect somebody in. So, I don't see that. Like, you know, if somebody gets 12 votes, they can still be voted in. But then it's going to take a lot more to get them out. And so I just don't see how how that balances out, like the checks and balances of us and the student body. Yeah. Mike? I'd argue the point of how CSAC was created. Mm -hmm. 80 people voted to create TSAC and destroy the old student gardens. And there's no barrier for that or anything. So I'd argue, what's the validity in this body we serve on? Through your point there. This changes two parts. It makes it so a significant amount of students need to be known, at least know about what the issues that's happening. So say, hey, I want to get rid of student governments. Well, you need to get 10% of the student body to back that. It makes such a drastic change that, quite frankly, kneecap student governments. And same thing with recall as well. Because if like a less than 1% of the student body is agreeing to that, that's not the voice of the whole student body. Okay. Thank you. I think when it goes into that then, then why is it not fair to require 10% of the student body to be to vote? Like, why isn't why isn't that also an argument of let's get student body engaged and let's get the student body to vote? Because I just don't see it. I don't, I don't see how, how that just that gives TSAC more power essentially than the students. And so I don't see how like both students, if we were a full council, in this case, six of us here today, um, I don't see how that is. How that balance is even more, like that's even less than ten percent, so I don't see it being re represented fully 
of, of that equitable lens of if you're gonna get 10% taking it out, then I, and I don't require 10% to get back in or to get in at all. I just don't see that balance. I would I would suggest if that's the route, um, then I think the same should be done for for how, how many students are gonna participate um, in the voting and how legitimate those votes are. Because I still, ever since day one, have said that I still think it's wrong that less than 1% of the body population voted uh, TSAC, voted TSAC in and voted and has voted us in as members because that's still not representative. Mm -hmm. And so I think the same should be done in that case then. I think, oh, before you go, I think Dr. Barron has something to say. Yeah, I think that what I was going to say just in response to that is yes, there has been votes overturned now ever since I've been involved, um, which is a little bit pre-COVID. And my concern is I worry about how having such a high, and I said this to Mike already, a high percentage, 10%, even for referendum, that could be a pretty big deal, not just recall, but referendum, not just about the structure of feedback, but referendums around, I don't know, let's say something like mental health support, right? Or a student fee or something like that. It, and those things, if we haven't had a 10% turnout for voting in years, probably a decade, I worry about that engagement to get something like that happen. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just, I see what you're saying and I, I'm concerned about, there just hasn't been a lot of engagement. And I think that way it falls on our responsibility as administrators and whatever, but it also falls on your shoulders as feedback counselor. And so that that's where I see the concern. Right. I agree hundred percent with you. I would love to see the engagements increase, but also that is not at the fault of really TSAC. That's the fault of like administration, in my opinion. That's a lack of like promotion from within there. I don't even think I've ever seen like, I mean, I, I don't think I've seen Mr. Eden, like besides Dr. Brony Simpkins, promote it from student advocacy, from student leadership heavily at all in the years I've been here. And I do think like more people involved is a better idea. But then, like, how do you how do you make that change? Are you? And, and what I was gonna say? Do you have? A, you were really good last week at giving us a friendly amendment when it came to accessibility and economics. Do you have a friendly amendment to this? Yeah, I think a, a friendly amendment is if we want to keep it in the sense of equal and equal. Then I think it would take a hundred percent of of the voters or like so. Of, if it, if it was 100 people who voted, then it would take 100 people to get somebody out. Because I think then that makes it one reasonable in the sense of like, okay, at least these amount of people are the ones who are participating. And so it could, then that just bounces out with the other set of people to take somebody out. Um, because it's, in that case, it's still not, not necessarily fully equal since not everyone gets, gets the same amount of votes. Um, but yeah, I think it's more, reachable and more and gives more um power back to the student body instead of taking the that power and uh holding it in just fully within TSAC. And so I would say instead of the 10% of student body, a hundred percent of the original vote or of the original voter count. Does that makes sense. I, I see and something else, is there anything we can add that like um for these things to not be advertised uh like Places like Rowdy's Corner, so in there, like something that keeps it neutral. Um, regarding the number, I don't know, we have an advisory person here that is just here to do elections and like choosing. Would we be okay with uh, an input from our? What, what do you think? So last year, um, I'm sure everybody kind of already knows this, but we got 311 votes. Uh, 10% of the student population would be 1,600 people. I don't see that happening if we have 300 dollars votes. I'm going to try my hardest to make it a bigger number this year. Uh, um, you know, I would love to get about 400 or 500. That would be sweet. Um, yeah. Uh, but honestly, I think 10% is just is not, I think, realistic right now. Um, yeah. Mike. And I don't mind lowering that. I will not accept that, that in your change, though. Like, I will vote that in your change. I don't mind lowering that bar to threshold, 
but I'm not going to accept that shit. Like, you can vote it in whatever the cost of those. Yeah, is but, like, I mean, threshold, I, I put it here as 10%. Yeah. And I mean, can, someone else can, like, probably argue me, like, down from that. That's just, but I do, I do what uh, Denny mentioned. You go for what you want, knowing you're probably going to not get it. So, if someone wants to, like, work me there, it's fine, too. But it's what the council thinks. I have another question though. Could, do, do they have to be two in the same? Can it be a certain number, whatever, 100% of the city vote for recall, and then a referendum does could be a different something? Why are we? Why are they being combined? What do you mean? Like, why are you saying recall or referendum has to be 10% of the vote? Does it have to be that? Because there was the the so for Dwight Tzak and. Gabe, Gabe was there. He can his, give me history lesson. The way TSAC was created is referendum and in less than one, zero point one percent. Right. So the ref like referendums would not be around for the structure TSAC could support a lot of other things. Correct. And in my opinion of that, that requires ample student feedback for you to make a drastic change. Now, there wasn't a bar in this election post. There was, there was a small one, but I don't think it was a sustainable amount. Mm -hmm. To hey, someone is like how T Sack to, to tear down again and we start from day one four years ago. You know, so that's what I that's my point in raised it. We're at 138. We have seven more items in the agenda. We'll all hold five. Um I would go for five. I would go for five percent. What's five percent though? Well that depends on the student population. If we're at 17,000 students, 1,700 is roughly is 10 percent, so it's about 850 students. But if you, if someone's willing to go lower, yes. How do friendly amendments work? Because I remember last I got a little confused with what Matt and how friendly amendments are right. proposed to council, not the, not the person. So I'm like a little confused on that. Well, that, that's what we voted so, yes. on the other friendly amendments. Correct. But we have to first. We have to agree okay. to so, some, yeah. something set. So the, that's what I'm saying. My the way it should work is authors can make changes to them. But if I deny your offer, you can go around and make it like council votes. Technically, okay. now whether that is yes, no. I mean, so. but here I, I mean I can if I I'm allowed to make changes to my document. Is that correct? This established the agreements. Yes. I will make the change for both of them for 6.5% rather than 10%. That's fine. Yeah, I made a change. Oh, if you have a different one, you are more. That's fine. And okay. I said 10. So can I motion now? Because cool. I think I make a motion and if it dies down, then it dies okay, down. Go ahead. Awesome. I motion for 100% of the original voter count to be needed in order to remove someone and for 5% of the student body to be required for referendum. Is there a second? Good question. So, like, for the 100%, does that have to be the same people or just no, no, just the same number? But yeah, I understand. But I, 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 I would like to add that like you cannot lobby at like vulnerable places like Facebook. I don't know. Well, that's that that the right, so right. The right. 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 So right. 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 100% of the students who voted, same number, number. and then 5% of the student body to create oh, for a referendum to either pass or die. Or try to be How many um, is 5%? 5% would be about 850 rating. We're, we're voting on the 5%. We're voting on both. We're voting on 100% of the students who voted. Or recall or recall oh. to recall someone and then five percent for referendums to change yeah mm -hmm. okay and the, it has been second so everybody who agrees say aye 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 any objections aye why vote nay me nay too 
Um, I have same. Yep, same. We're not done. That doesn't pass because two thirds were well, yeah. and There were three yeses, two nays, two abstentions. So I just, I would like that if we have the caveat that you cannot yeah. lobby in up like in, a, in, in public, in public yeah. places like yeah. that. That yeah. that I would. I like to. I'll vote yes to that if it's five percent PQ. Five percent of the population, five percent to recall. Sure, I'll take that. What is 2.5%? Two, two I said five. Actually. I understand. I'm asking. I'm asking. 2.5%? 2.5%? Yeah. It's four hundred and twenty five. Okay. Yeah. 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 Is that still a no? 2.5? You said five. I agree to five. And I'm down to 10. So where, where, what are you trying to do? <laughs> I'm trying to. Here, I will have a this. Here's, so I can still make changes to my other thing. Is this? Is this yeah. I'll say five each. That's my that's my final. Unless you want to add your thing in there too, like I, if you I, find like malpractice in the lobbying, it's determined by like maybe like election manager if there's like there's like something like that. What's so my question is, aren't there like university policies already that like keep this from happening? It did not keep it from happening. Well, last year. Right, but I think that everyone should should we accept that these university policies are already in place need to be enforced. And because they're already in place, so because they're not allow already allowed to do that it's by saying that um, they're already not allowed. Um, okay. Let me, yes, agree. I believe we need more rationale included in this rather than arguing so much about numbers. Because if the onus is on the person um, making the complaint or wanting to call the referendum, they need to be first directed to. I know that there's something in there, but. Um, directed to the Dean of Students office with reasonable um, grounds that the, the, the counselor in question has caused harm with oh. proof that's vetted through the Dean of Students office before being allowed, before calling the referendum. I don't know if that's allowed, but the rationale of just someone's ire, you know, they're angry about something and they're gonna make everybody vote. And, you know, we're trying to play with numbers. I don't know. I just Mike. think I agree with that 100% Re. Now, the Dean of Students Office did absolutely nothing last semester mm. to like, I mean, I don't know that I'm trusted the Dean of Students Office, but they didn't do anything last semester. I love that caveat. I do, and I don't mind adding that in, assuming the Dean of Students Office takes it seriously. Because, I mean, like, there was nothing that was done. No, you like, nothing was broken, technically. Can I have and all the problems that, like, I started last semester? Can I have no, a nothing's been. Solved either in that sense. What about so, putting it back through the accountability committee first? That, and that's what I was, I would, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So that's what that caveat is for. So it goes through the accountability committee. First. Both. Well, what will well, both the, the dean of students and the accountability committee in case the dean of students does that does nothing once again. Um. Well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about numbers as we were saying. I think, you know, I think the big problem, like Mike is pointing out, is that there was no protection for, for you know, sure. Mike in this situation. And it was, yeah, it was, it was used, right, exploited, and we're trying to prevent that for from happening in future iterations. Where so let's put this protective wall in between what students can do to us and have this accountability process in the middle of it before any kind of referendum, because this comes from us, right? We're the ones deciding this. Dave, how would you feel about 500? Not a percentage, but at 500 students. I think 500 to remove somebody? To remove somebody. Sam has something to say. Do you want to hear it first? Sam? Um, so doesn't I feel like setting a number instead of a percentage means we're gonna have to update it every time the campus Correct. changes Correct. Correct. You know, right. like if we have a sudden drop or an increase, then yeah. that number is not gonna matter anymore. Right. So I don't think we should do flat numbers. Okay. Good call. Thank you, Sam. I'm just like, what's the legality? What's the issues with uh vetting uh petition or uh, Recall or 
rougher and what are what are the well now that we're gonna codify it it's gonna get real mm -hmm. um but not from administration well i'll say that one of the additions i made to the elections code was making sure that there is a um that there is the appropriate documentation right around the yeah like state, it, right? yeah that they're, they're allowed that it's like can't just make like things these, up, right? right? Like, right. and that where there has to, these things have to be documented, or that this is, that we're involved in that process. Right. Like, okay. So there's that. that. Yeah, there's okay. a little bit of that. But okay. It's important to yeah. this. We saw last semester someone completely use that to their advantage. Right. You know, cost damage. Yes. So. Right. Well, I got this one for changes I made. So, and then re I'm gonna move on to the five percent number. I'm done talking about this and those brings up another moment. But I don't mind adding in like to at least the referent recall side. Um a metric that the petition has to be vetted by the accountability committee and the student's office. If we're focused on sure of justice in this university, I think that's solid. Okay. And I can just make that change. Yeah. Okay, do you mind adding in that? Yeah. I've, dro I've dropped it to 5% for each. And what about oh, the not, not, here? Not, not, sure, about yes. And okay. I'm doing that position. Okay. Well, Reese, sorry, Reese, next. I will have a friendly amendment too. In the paragraph that begins with the intent to recall an item or candidate previously voted on, I, I don't have the exact wording, but I think it should have a statement that um, the issue. This was one of the reasons that everybody was really upset this last time because people didn't know what they were signing. They were told something completely different and they signed this. They didn't have the, you know, whatever they were, Paul and Thomas were presenting to the students was not what they really signed. And so there needs to be a statement as to purpose and it needs to be at the top of every page. You know what I mean? That yeah. where the signatures will be, this this stated purpose needs to be at the top of every page, so we know students understand what they're signing, and then, you know, if we don't have any problem with that, but I don't know how to say that. Okay. That was a main problem last time, right, guys? <laughs> Yeah, I second that. Okay, we're motioning for that. We're motioning to add that every single recall page must have a statement of purpose, a legible, legible statement of purpose. Yes. And then can you add my change to my own document? And then he's doing 5% for each. Yes. Yeah, what was that part? Of the I hear you. My part was um, okay. the petition must be vetted by the DSU's office and the candidate. And SGT sites kind of Perfect. Lovely. Okay, but we're voting on Reese. Yes. Oh, okay. I, and I have a motion we vote for this. I second that. Agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Everybody who agrees, say aye. 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 Sounds good. Wait, and did you go go over the any abstentions? Oh, any abstentions? Any objections? Sounds good. Um. So we're going for five. Gabe. I still think 5% is inequitable. And I think it really brings more power to TSAC and less power from the students. You know, and, and again, it's that same sense. Uh, these students, the majority which are which we represent, will have less power than we do, right? And we're and it's a way to keep ourselves or to keep or as council members to, to keep themselves in TSAC. Um, and you know, and I, and I just think that it's inequitable because because we are here to, to represent the students. Um, and I think if you, if we were going the five percent route, I would say five percent would be good. If we then require that five percent of students have to have to vote in order to vote people in, because it's not it's not fair. It's not an equal balance between the majority and, and the minority. Because we as TSAC are the minority. There's only 12 of us as a full council. And how can we have more power over that than, than the students that we're representing? And so that with the, that's the, those changes um, that Mike has made, um, and I 
and then two, then one of the amendments that I have is then just going down to the to the one hundred percent of the one hundred percent of the original number of students who voted for that session, and in addition, on that last section, I don't know what section it is, but after uh, the petition must be vetted by dean of students and the SGE committee committee, um, the petition has to follow university university procedures as well. Because I think that goes back into like who or where people can um, lobby for it. Um, but I so yeah, that's my. Motion. What? Okay. What? Do the motion? Because he's he's made a motion. Then. Yes. Yeah. I motion that it that it takes one hundred percent of the original student voter turnout um to recall somebody, and the addition of of not only has to has, has to, does it have to be vetted by dean of students and the committee committee, it, ha it must follow uh, procedures done and put in place by university. So does that mean straightforward vote? Correct. Change, like, okay, that's my question. Like, what does mean? There's no policy that's in place. You know that, right? I thought that about lobbying. Yeah. There are. There are. For example, it's even in the elections code. You guys, you all, like for example, my department or the veteran center couldn't be uh, right. lobbying for you during the campaign, right? Am I wrong, Mr. Sam? Because I can't find wrong. Yeah, professors are not allowed to endorse yeah. candidates, so they wouldn't be allowed to. Professors, lobby departments, right. like we could, we can't do that, and so that falls true of even like Audie's corner should have fallen into that as well. So then, why did that not happen then? I don't know, but we're not talking about them. We're talking about now, so we need to be solution focused. Um, this is Dr. Perlman. Yeah. Um. <laughs> What other vetting processes other than There's dean of students? Have been second. Dean of students and um, accountability committee. Is there any advisor role in that? Because I feel like the advisors would be able to give the best advice or like see how the situation really unfolds since they're the closest staff to TSAC. I'm not sure that. That's a conflict of interest. I don't know, but is it just those two things that are vetting something? Yeah. Are you advising the dean of students? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Let's, let's, let's do the other person. Let's do the other person. That's the other county. The election. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think I could still have oversight over post like election, just like procedural violations, like because it's still like within. Like I get, I could. In charge of running the special elections or recall elections, so I still have like I don't want to say jurisdiction, but I can still oversee things after election season. Right. So I think I would be a good point of contact for is this person violating our elections code because I am kind of like checking the election. Right, we would check the balance more so than the advisors. Right? What about when they've already like they did everything right in the elections, but my concern is like the false grounds kind of area. Accusing people, I right? not the Those are accountability concerns, right? Okay. And again, here's the here's the line that I don't want it to get blurred with Armando and I's goal of if it's a student led and student plan, so while we might have advice recommendations at the end of the day, it does fall to Sam's role and you all to make the final decision. And that's why I think it's really good to have a Sam for that role is really. Go ahead. Do you want to move on? Okay, I'm gonna come in. Oh my gosh, I can't speak. Uh, I'm in a motion. What's up? Uh, he no. Oh, I'm so sorry. You had a motion. I'm so sorry. It wasn't second. It wasn't. No, it wasn't. But second. it wasn't that. If it was, if there's a second. Is there a second? So your motion is to have just 100 percent of the voters to kick someone off, and that's it. To 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 kick someone off. Already following the vetting process, and that it is like vetted by the students, along with um, following university procedures for lobbying or university policies for lobbying. I second that. Okay, second. Second. Everybody, please say aye. 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 
Any objections? I object. Aye. Aye. Do you agree? You agree? Bree, are you agreeing or are you abstaining? I'm I'm agreeing. Okay. What about the referendum? He didn't change the referendum. No, so. change. Yeah. So that's what we motion that we move on to Sam's stuff next. Um, okay. What are, so when the referendum stays as, as 10, I just want to make things <laughs> clear. Stays as five? He didn't change the referendum. Right. And oh, I changed it to five for referendum. So. Okay. Sam, you're up. All right. Um, so I've got three changes to the elections code. Um, I guess I can just read them out and then yes. all decide. Uh, first off is the definition of the manager. This would be under section one. Uh, manager refer, uh, colon, refers to the appointed position of manager of election services who works under the MSU Center for Multicultural Engagement and Inclusion. Motion to vote on that. A motion to vote on the election manager's changes. Well, keep, we're, we're, no, I'm motioning that we vote on that one specifically. Oh, uh, your motion. Yeah, I'm motioning. Oh, I second it. Thank so, you. I thought you were okay, asking. Everybody will agree. Say aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, next one uh, would be under. Uh, section four would be a new article, article two. Um, these are counselor roles, or I guess uh, candidate roles, it should be, uh, I should say. But um, the first one would be student counselor. Uh, this, like I said, is copied from last year's manual, so I will just read it out real quick. Uh, student government, the Student Advocacy Council, is a board of student leaders at MSU Denver that are committed to the advancement and advocacy of students. Council members utilize all means necessary for the incorporation of students into the university experience and are the governing body that shares responsibility with administration to bring about change. Can you mute yourself? Can would you slow down and speak up? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Reed. Um, we then have a list of responsibilities. Uh, prepare for meetings by reviewing minutes and other materials. Become well informed on subject matters to be discussed and participate actively in decisions. Council members will ensure that SDPSAC meetings are being conducted in accordance with the committee's bylaws. All council members are required to report weekly to the committee's areas of work to ensure that the body's voices are honored and committing to remove barriers that create and inequitable opportunities for students, establish consistency, trust, and transparency with all university proposals. Council members create memorandums, press releases, inquiries, and research to support the necessary needs of students. Council members are required to engage with students in emails, office hours, peer surveys, institutional data, peer support, and any means necessary to provide advocacy for students. Uh, uh, Councilors shall support and participate in SGTSAC sponsored programs and activities as their professional and personal schedules allow. They shall be advocates for SGTSEC and the students it serves, will work collaboratively and cooperatively with fellow members of SGTSEC and maintain strong communication. Semi-annually during the summer and winter sessions, council members will plan and implement strategies for the foundation and actualization of student advocacy. The chair of the, the, chair of the council will rotate on a semester-long basis within the council to ensure sustained shared governance. Council members can seek professional development and or trainings to support divisions within the council. And then the council's work is made up of 50% administrative functions, including but not limited to emails, proposals, budgets, agendas, minutes, committee service, and more, and 50% community engagement. This includes but is not limited to attending events, programming, forums, discussions, community outreach, and social engagement, and social media and or public discourse, and more. I have a question. Yeah. Did you, is the five-hour requirement? The credit requirement? No, the five hour as in like you're required to be in the office. Um, I did not remove it. That was not in there. It was not in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can. Can we make a family? Answer to it's that? in the constitution. It's in the constitution. Okay. Then I'm cool. I'm a little confused, but I'm just trying to understand why these changes proposed are in the elections. This feels more like a demand coding. Like condo type of stuff, not an election thing, but. Well, I think it's because he's outlined the responsibility 
Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you so uh, when you're running, you know what else you're committing to. Thank you. This kind of lets yeah. clarification. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Motion we vote for them? I second that. Okay. Everybody will agree? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any objections? Please. All right. Um, next, I got the state cap representative. This is state language. Um, do I need to read this one out? Two votes. Like, I don't think we can change it. It's for like time capability. Yeah, we can change it. Yeah, yeah we can change there. it. So and we're good. We're just gonna vote on adding the sake of changes. I'm voting we add the sake of changes as state mandated. Second. Uh, Thank you. Um, everybody who agree, say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any objections? Sweet. And the final change is the student trustee position. Uh, same thing as the state cabinet state mandated. So we just got to go with what they said. Okay. We vote that to add the. Why would it open? Motion to. Thank you, Mike. That's nice. Everybody who agrees, say aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Sweet. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Mike, back to you. Looks like we've done everything we need to do on this document. I motion that we uh, clarify this interruptions. I'm so sorry. Will has something to say. I still believe that I want a motion for Sam's endorsement on this. He line. did. He, did. he, oh, doesn't, yes. he doesn't get to motion. He, he, can have to, he said he did it. Okay. Yes. Did it. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Then I second we finally codify our elections code into the Constitution. Uh, <laughs> Kenny. Good question. Just make sure that the wording all here is okay. I'm okay. Everybody okay? No. No. Sam. No, there. it, there's like an extra parenthesis at the end there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the second highlight. Oh, uh, what's that say? Oh, oh yeah. Gabe. Just a good question. So. In the sense of the referendum that Mike was referring to, or was the referendum or the, the resolution about um, the, the significant interest 100 voter, 100 percent voter turnout? Is that like like an update to like a, to a resolution right now, or like enough? Because you talked about something about like I didn't change like the rep like the resolution, but I changed this, and I got confused on what I meant by that. I'm confused with you guys. So, so he's. He compromised on the five percent for the reference, yeah. and then but we voted the hundred percent voter turnout. So we we just changed the election. Oh, that, oh okay. that's okay. all that's that like happened. nothing else that needs to be. No, I okay. did I did not change anything else in the elections. Code. Okay, okay, cool, awesome. No, he well, and he said it like yeah. but for transparency. He specifically highlighted we changed it. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Yep. Okay. I made my motion. Okay, I second. Well, okay, everybody who agree? Say aye. Uh, uh, We're codifying. It's two thirds to pass. Right? It needs two thirds to pass to codify. Okay. Into our constitution. Into our constitution. Okay, everybody who agree into codifying the elections code into the constitution, please say aye. 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 You said I? I did. Thank you. Anybody who objects? Any abstentions? I abstain. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I support you. I support you. Thank you for all. Okay. It passes. Thank you for. Thank you for your work, Mark. Thank you for all the hard work you put in this morning. Nice job. And all of you. Mike. Armando will be happy. Thing of business. I'm getting the next okay, thing. Business, so. <laughs> okay, this is this is one sign. Uh, Alejandro, you're going to have to take the ring off. <laughs> All right, what's this? Okay. So, we were very, very helpful when the Denver Metro Fair Housing Center came in. Yeah. We doubled their engagement. Mm -hmm. So, go us, because that was really cool. Uh, there were students there that were at house and they were asking questions about like justice in housing. So it was helpful. Um, they are doing a conference in April 
and it is going to be on. Oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. I had two doba this morning. <laughs> oh my god. Um, and it is going to be about um, like gentrification. And let me read it again. Oh, in reverse segregation. Uh, they're going to have a keynote speaker. And they're going to have two panels that are going to uh, discuss specifically housing justice for uh, BIPOC, the BIPOC population, and uh, protecting integrated communities such as indigenous communities and immigration communities. Um, last year, we did a donation of four thousand dollars for this specific organization, and John Paul reached out again. He wants to know if we can sponsor, and we would. The sponsorship would go to buy or purchase registrations for our students as well as the IEP and to secure the, the event call was to be the Um again, they're asking for four thousand dollars. That's all I have to say. I'm not open discussion time, give me a sec because I'm not in charge of the discussion. I'm gonna be able to handle it. Here's your timer. Okay. Well, so at least $4,000. Are they going to give us like a risk spreadsheet of what they're spending on? Them? I'm totally for this. I just don't personally think this is what I'm saying. I wouldn't want to see those $4,000 go to pay their salaries or their whatever. And it's an event for the students. So, this, you know, that's just my concern. Yeah. I think I got Mike and then Gabe yeah. and John. So this is Mike Ramsey. Mike Ramsey. John Paul. Proceed. His name is John Paul. Proceed. No. Um, so Mike Ramsey did this last year. He's the one who came to it last year. Um, I don't believe he gave us any itemized spreadsheet of what it is. Yeah. I need that in here for because like I have no clue where the money went last year. Uh, I know it was a uh, there's a debate on it. Yes, and no, and I have a response. So, if he contact me with my gram, I can't, I can't pass it down. Um, but I'm not working with Mike this time. I'm working directly with the organization. So, John Paul is more than happy to, and he is the head of this organization. He's more than happy to like let us know how things are going. There is also a student representative in the university. Uh, her name is Tatum. And she is our intern. So anything we need, any clarification, Tatum is more than willing to like will to work out with us and like work out every every detail. Yeah. Okay. Right, you'll go ahead. I'm not direct. Okay. This. Right, do you have any direct comment to that? Or you so what they can do is work with the budget committee to work on that. That's another they can do. Like well, because because quick because quick thing, this is a donation we're giving, right? Yeah. Did this go through the budget committee to be approved? Yes, it did. It did? Did it actually? Yes. I don't know. I'm asking how to think. Okay, it did? Yeah. So do we want to have continual work with them? Or do we just want to have like an IMS spreadsheet? I'm asking you, obviously. What do you think? What do you mean when you say continue to work with them? Do like, you want them to work with directly the budget committee? Or do you want them just to supply the budget committee with an RN receipt? I would say, I would say just have them send in the itemized spreadsheet. Before we, I thought either. So I just actually like, say like, yes, we will do the four thousand for this. And if there's something that we don't agree with, we'd be like, okay, well, either you can change this, or we're gonna remove that amount from what we're giving out. Okay, so you want me to go back and tell them to give us a spreadsheet before we vote on four thousand dollars? I don't, I don't mind. How about they, we, we say yes, but we want a out of my sheet. Why don't we just put it in the my yeah, yeah, I've always put it in the yeah. Okay, like, me. Give me a friendly amendment that I we can motion for. Motion for something. <clears throat> I motion. Wait, this is amendment. Um, Ernest, I motion that we add a. Um, what do I want to put this in there? Yeah, go go to the therefore. The, the um, okay. we'll donate four thousand after an itemized spreadsheet is provided. That would be, and then for that third season, we would have not adopted it. And also, then that needs a second. Keep in mind that we can't just give them the money. So okay. if they would, if they want Thank those you. registrations, oh, we, we, they right, need right. us to do it for them rather than us giving them the money to do it. Got it. Uh, yeah. Wait, because 
there are there's people. Yeah, there. Gabe's next, and then John. Mm -hmm. Did you have your hand? Yeah, the motion's made. The motion's made. Thirty seconds. Oh, I. Yeah. Well, I yeah, I second. No, they second. You have to. Oh, my bad. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Objections? No. So, okay. so that's the uh, uh, game you next. Yeah. So I think one, how what percentage of this event are we supplying to like what's their ultimate their total cost? And are there are, are there other um, departments that are contributing to this as well? And is there a way to know like how much the other departments are contributing and which other departments they are um, to see what percent of our part is compared to the other departments as well. Yeah. Um, the political science department is in this, the Phoenix Center is in this, and this GIDA is also in this. I believe, I believe that we're doing about like five percent because everybody else is doing everything else. But I'm like I understand this is a matter of transparency. I am willing to table this bill for next week and ask these questions. When and that resolution has been added, I mean that sorry, that friendly amendment. So I will call John Paul tomorrow. Yeah, because I, I don't I don't feel like we're comfortable right now with how this is this is going. And I would rather us be all of us be comfortable with what we're doing. Sure. Yeah. Okay. We're cool. Okay, then I will go tomorrow. Besides contributions and spreadsheets, anything else do you guys want me to ask? Yes. Are we tabling? Because I know like last time we tabled, just kind of giving out flag, giving out um, just getting yes. money out there. Are we going to table? And is that in there? And that is not in there, but I also haven't had a chance to talk to the PR committee. So that is something. Okay, I will get back to the PR committee. Yeah. Hi. Um, <laughs> sorry, Dr. Brown, we had John next. Oh, go ahead, John. Uh, I'm not to say anything because I have to listen this time, so I don't have to say thank you. Did you have your hand up, or mm, no? Sorry. Okay, you're good. Okay, maybe you all have not talked about this, but one suggestion I would make is that if you all vote on the response of this, just making sure that your logo is reflected yeah. on this flyer and that they that you are. Um, Representing yourself, however, that's tabling or just being there or the feedback buttons or something so that students know who you are when you're there, especially because this is around like election season and campaigning and all those things that people know that we're supporting students. Okay. Yeah, so that's the logo. There's a placeholder in the. Oh my gosh, the flyer. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're tying. We have 20 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna table it. I will get back guys. Um, yeah, I'll get back to you next week. Okay. Sweet. Okay, I uh, will take. Armando's not here for the student affairs survey policy feedback. Uh, yeah, the person who is gonna come also can't make it today. So. Okay. So next what? item of business. Table What is that? I didn't even know what that is. I have no supposed to go. I think uh, it's that I think it's the the climate. I think it's the climate the climate survey. survey that I, I, I think, about. I'm pretty sure that is it. I can talk about it briefly, like just tell you that it is. You can go how it got it in your inbox. Yeah. Okay. It's important. That's and it's time sensitive. That's why they need to say something about it. So the ODI office and I'm on the executive committee that's I think overseeing it. That's why I was trying to that out. Um, we are conducting a campus climate survey. The survey only happens every three years. Um, and so that's why it's important. Um, it, this is going out to students, faculty, and staff. You all probably got it in your inbox. It's a long if survey. It's on the short end. It could take 15 minutes on the long end, about 25. There are both quantitative and qualitative questions. The survey tool or instrument was developed by um, two of our faculty members here, um, Dr. Kay Sher and Jovan Fernandez in the psychology department to be very specific to MSP Denver because we didn't like previous instruments. I used one for my dissertation. That's why, you know, so that's why I care about this. So um, your input is really important, but getting student input around how they're 
experiencing the campus, especially around their various identities, more than we've ever been at 54% BIPOC, 58% percent first gen and then we have a lot, a high immigrant population too. So just wanting you all to make sure that you're promoting that, that your input is really valuable and important and with some of the moral issues too, we've got to hand staff, you know, what they feel, it just went out of market. So that's what that is. Don't forget to do it. See, it's, it's important. It is important. It's an it's important thing. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna do them. Uh, I hope you can't work that course, and we have 30 minutes. I'm just gonna go through them real quick. Did you guys have a chance to look at the faculty and handbook thing? Yeah, did you guys see the red lines? There's a lot of red lining. Um, when this went to the faculty senate, it got ugly. It got ugly. <laughs> it was, there was a lot of names. <laughs> like, it was so bad. It was. There were people with PhDs calling each other's names that we should not be calling each other. And, um, and here, when you I guess you look at it from like a an outside perspective, uh, the thing is, when it goes to the tenure one, which is what brings all of these issues, is the fact that they're adding the DIA, um, the DIA actions to be able to get tenure. Uh, as the, the way it reads, yes, DIA, sorry, sorry. Yes, <laughs> the, the diversity, inclusion, equity, equity and inclusion, DEI, I'm sorry. That that Michael Kennedy has presented on that. Right, yeah. So when you add the diversity, equity, and inclusion aspect, I guess faculty are worried of like, how are we going to demonstrate that we are doing these things in order to get a promotion or like secure our tenure? That is the feedback I gotten. That also worries me that like puts people on the spot because yes, as students of color, we love this, but this is this also can be used as diverse reverse racism. It just happens because it is, you yeah. know. Um that is my feedback for them. And like, how how is possible? how are you going to assure that like equitable process that is not gonna just let a dean use these processes to you know like remove someone or just like harm harm someone or, or do some harm within within these groups? Uh, there is not a process outlined of how they would check for these practices. So, but of course, I'm not gonna go and give a feedback because I haven't brought it to you yet. How do we feel? This is what I have to say. Well, I personally experienced that with a person of color with the young lady. So. But is she yet tenure? Like, is she a professor? Is she a tenure professor? Because that, that, that's well, what the- Well, let me say this. Part of that incident that I sent you, it was a professor and a young lady. So, that's another, that's another thing I was thinking about too, when she didn't get a chance to come over here. We have a, some type of meditation practice on this campus where it, it's, it's, still, it's still under the, it's still under the, Mike, come on. Some decent words. Yeah. Well, it's not that I could tell anybody what to do. The professor that approached me, his, his name was Hank. I put my ID up and I told him that I was with student government. And he was just like, we don't have any time for this. And so I had to really, there was things in my mind. I'm saying, I, I could have said, move your monkey ass somewhere else. But I, I still not bit my tongue, but I was able to have enough, and this has nothing to do with man or woman, enough spirituality in me while I had so many things going on, not to be like, you need to be deleted, because I could have did that. Even though that happened, I know that we're all created equally, but we don't all operate equally. And we still have to operate in some grace 
you know, because people have called me, I've been called nigga, fag, I've been called a lot of things. And I still have to not hold my tongue, just be my, because sometimes you got to speak out and not be concerned about how people perceive you. Then there are times with me, we're all human on this council. And we collectively have to take a moment to breathe, period. And from that, everybody makes their personal choices. I'll say this and I'll be quiet. We can make a revision, but you can you can put a de- revision on the decision and still I'm shaking a little bit because I'm a very confident person. And I think sometimes I, I like to speak from my heart. I speak, students come at me and they know me as the fairy godmother. That's the title that they say it because students have said things to me. And so we all have to breathe. And I'm not saying I'm right either because I, I could care less about being right. I'd rather be happy than be right. Just just take a moment to just think sometime. And that, that's all I'm going to say. Um, I read the document, and I personally don't have many issues with it, but I'm also someone who's always more willing to give up more of my time and all of that. And I can understand the other argument of like them being work, overworked and all that. Mm-hmm. So I totally get that. So, I, yeah, I just wanted, it's, a, it's a difficult one for sure. Right. And I just wanted to come back to them with like a specific solution for them, not just like, hey, we feel like this. And my, my solution is like, can we just like somewhere in the wording make sure that we outline that there's a specific procedure or how we're changing for these things? Because it's not. So, are we okay with that, with me saying that? A procedure or a process? A process. Because yeah, sorry, a process. Like a process where we check for what they're asking in, in the sense of like content expertise, like inclusive pedagogy, pedagogy, and instructional design, like all of these things that they have changed, like I just think they could be weaponized real real fast. Does that make sense? I think saying that would be important. Yeah, and then that's that's what I'm that's what I made sure that I, I'm gonna go back to faculty. And Dr. Rainey this and tell them like this is, but I, I didn't want to just be like, hey, we feel like this. I wanted it, yeah, input, Imp- like actual input, yeah, in, instead of feelings. Um, yeah. We have five minutes. Do you- I want to say to you, you're doing an excellent job. I have to say that, period, because you are maintaining. This is an example of spirituality. You're maintaining a level of calmness while we're able to speak with our diversified opinions. So I would like to thank you for even demonstrating that level of spiritual excellence. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you guys. Okay. When do you have to give that feedback? I have to, when do I have to give that feedback? Well, they're asked us to endorse it, but I'm not gonna ask us to endorse something. I, I didn't feel comfortable endorsing it unless I brought this back. So. I'm gonna send this email on Monday to him and Dr. Lechuga. I'll CC you okay. on it just so, yeah. Just curious with the time. Yeah, okay. and then once they answer that, then we'll probably discuss it on, depending on what they say, we might endorse it next week, or we okay. might go through more. We'll be curious. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Uh, okay. Oh my gosh. Mm. Uh, okay. So the first one, it is motion to cancel the March 19th for day of service. I think that Dr. Graham was talking March about. 29th. Ma- March 29th. March 29th. March 29th. <laughs> I am not okay. Says, uh, I am really tired. Okay, March 29th. So I motion that we cancel our meeting on March 29th so we can attend the day of service. I second that. I second. Every agree, say aye. I mean, aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Sweet. Okay, I'm in a motion for the meeting to extend 10 minutes. I second. Okay, everybody who agrees, say aye. Aye. Okay. Any objections? Any abstentions? Great, the floor is yours. Okay, so as we know, um, we extended 
um, Grace to two counselors who have been non-participatory and I have reached out to the Restorative Justice Coalition and they have not um, had any um, contact with them in re reconciliatory efforts. So I bring forth this resolution to remove TSAC members who are no longer no, no longer eligible to participate. I'll read you the abstract, it's a short resolution. We Student Government, the Student Advocacy Council voted to suspend counselors Paul Nelson and Thomas Cheney on January 26, 2024, following many months of inactivity and non-participation within the council. Both counselors had the opportunity during suspension to attend meetings without voting rights for one month and undergo training by the Restorative Justice Coalition, participating with SGTSAC council members. As it is the end of that month and no contact has been made with this council or the RJC by either counselor in this regard, we now take steps for their removal from office. Whereas all members of the council must have a fair and equal chance to participate as members in SGTSAC, whereas counselors Paul Nelson and Thomas Cheney have, effect, have effectively chosen, sorry, not to do this and have yielded their right to reconcile with this council. Therefore, be it resolved, effective March 8th, 2024, the full council will vote to remove Councillor Paul Nelson and Councillor Thomas Cheney as members of SGT SAC for the remainder of this term, which means, according to the Accountability Structure Resolution, CR 242, voted on and approved by the TSAC membership at large on January 26, 2024, followed by Constitutional Amendment uh, 14, this is why you need to change the other number, accepted on February 2nd, 2024, they are ineligible to run for SGT SAC for two years. Thank you. We will start the discussion on the Minnesota City Council. Seven minutes have started. Okay. okay. One question that I have. I just want to clarify and have it like on record, like fully yeah. here. So to confirm, Paul and Thomas have not quit. Like they have not sent out any okay. any official resignation, any official document saying that they're that they quit. They have not. I know that um, they did not reply to anything sent to them, and um, they. It was reported they had told other students they were no longer on this council around the time they made things out of that office. Okay. Thanks, Gabe. Any? Okay. And Gabe, I apologize that we didn't get to talk about this. This was brought to my attention just a couple of days ago, so I wrote this quickly. So I'm very sorry. Okay. Well, just a real quick question, if anyone knows, what was the last time we had any contact with the uh, Paul and Thomas? January. January. I think it was well. I think I spoke to uh, Paul on uh, February. Oh, just you did. To say, just to say hello. Oh. And uh, he waved at me. He said he, he thought that I was mad at him. And I was like, oh, I'll be uh, catching no attitude. <laughs> no, I'm 57. I don't do stuff like that. So. Anybody else? Okay. Thank we we tried to bring them back and right. in the right way. And so I think, does anyone else have anything? No. A motion that we vote on this. We, we can motion to end the discussion. Or end this, this, this uh, discussion. Uh, should end this discussion. A second. Everybody go agree, say aye. Aye. Can you any full deaths? Any abstentions? Anybody wants the motion to vote? I make a motion that we vote on the resolution. Thank you. I second. Okay, we're voting. Everybody full agree to remove Paul Thomas, no, Paul Nelson and Thomas Cheney. Say aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Okay. Okay. Okay, it passes. Uh, Dr. Brown, just for clarification, what, what's the next step? 
free of Do you feel comfortable sharing the outcome of the vote today or do you, how do you want to just write, email them? Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, based on, you know, the opportunities they were given as follow-up that this was determined on this day, you know, there was inaction. In yeah. Or do you want, I'm do you want me to that with you? Um, that's, I mean, I can, um, do you think I should phone them or just write them? I think it should be in writing. Um, and I think you should definitely copy. Yep. Us. Okay. Who do you copy? Yeah, I think, I think TSAC members should be, members should be included in addition to our mother when I. Yeah. It's like to, to support me. Right, to support you, yeah. Yeah. And if it's helpful to come from me and you, okay. we can offline. Okay. Well, I, I would have to say in my time being on this planet 57 years, I'm not Mr. Perfect. I said some things that with my mouth that I had to go back and apologize for. And so I'm always in the conversation of forgiveness. I'm, I'm a very big soul and I've had to go back and modify. And I wanna mention, if it wasn't for my mama, Doris Jean Dandridge and other women that I be around, always leave a place better than the way you found it, mm -hmm. starting with yourself. And that's something that I do. If I'm incorrect, I mean what I say, but if I'm incorrect, I'll be like, I apologize, let's modify. Keep it flowing like what? Thank you. Motion to address. It's okay. Everybody can agree to adjourn the meeting tonight. Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Okay, we're done.